once video to CH's true uh, request for help in understanding Gödel's like concepts of time travel. Uh, so I did some research into this, and um, now before right off the bat, I'm just gonna simply say that uh, I didn't find Gödel's exact equations, uh, what he meant by backwards time travel, but I do have easily an idea where I think he was going. Uh, Gödel was a logician, and uh, and obviously a philosopher, a mathematician. I think that he would probably have tried to have done this using set theory and topology. Uh, but that's a little beside the point. I ha I'll have a link to the equations which uh, allow backward time travel down in the video description. But this will be a conceptual and philosophical approach to the um, to the time traveling uh, issue. Okay, so here we have like in your previous diagram, you say, what if we have a um, uh, like an observer and uh, there's a spaceship circling around them? Now, what happens at, uh, with the circle as it approaches relativistic speeds? Well. Light itself actually bends space time, and because light itself bends space time, the speed that you um, the, the the reference frame is different, and so to an observer it looks like you're actually going backwards through time. If you want more clarification on this, uh, the expert on this I think is Ron Millet, who is like a uh, physics professor, and uh, he's also working on building the first time machine ever. So he's obviously the uh, I would say a pretty good authority on the subject. Uh, so you can check that out for for more uh, more detailed explanation. But again, so light itself bends space-time, so to the outside observer, it looks like you are traveling backwards through time. So, also, uh, there's a thought experiment, I think, uh, um, on uh, space and time. Like, let's say we view this cone, and here we have point one, uh, and we have point two, and I should say point three. Let's to see. Okay, so uh, point one, point two, and then point three. Now, this horizontal arrow will be representing space, and then this uh, vertical will be representing time. Now, we know that uh, we, 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 it, the rel relativity likes to pr um, preserve causality, cause and effect relationship, and um, that it, it, le it would lead to some very interesting paradoxes if, if that was broken. So, let, we can now look at this diagram. So, we have point one, which occurs at this, at this specific point in space and that specific point in time. Now, point three occurs at the same time, but at a different, different point in space. Um, so let's say something like, uh, well, it just can't be precisely exact, but let's say that uh, two people are, you know, trying to have like a uh, call each other at the exact same time, like they just planned this out ju just, just for the heck of doing it. Let's say at like 6 o'clock p.m., they immediately open the phone and hit dial. I mean, that, that would be the, virtually the same point in time. Not exactly, because obviously there's a millisecond difference. You can't ever be precisely exact all the time forever but um it, it will occur at different points in space and virtually the same point in time now again th this also goes for you can have the same point in space but occurring different points in time now again this is never ever precise because you can never be in the exact same place that you were at a different time um because you'll be like uh, i don't know nanometers at, at the least off um so you can never be precisely the exact same location all the time so what exactly does this mean for uh, for time travel and uh, all that stuff? Well, um, this th th this experiment shows that that when you try to go, you have to have a cause and you have to have an effect. Like you like you wouldn't be able to predetermine what caused something, uh, what the effect is. Like what was the, what was the original cause? Because there could be many. You'd have to like go technically forwards through time. There's you know um you can say it's a mapping. You know like you know from x to y. You know, because one, you know, it directly one affects the other. One's the independent, and one's the dependent variable. Um, but in time, is all, uh, pretty much always independent. Um, so that essentially is the conceptual idea of you know why uh, or how you can go backwards in time. Again, it's just simply light bent space time. So to the outside observer, you can travel back through time as you approach relativistic speeds, aka uh, speed of light three times ten to the eight meters per second squared in a vacuum. Um, so yeah. That is that is essentially now for a philosophical uh, interpretation. Well, I mean, there's there's this book that I, I, I want to check out. Girdle meets Einstein. We talk about this more in depth, but I do not have it handy. But what exactly does this mean? Like like let's say there's something like parallel universes, um, where the idea is that you have five dimensions, and at, at this very exact moment there's a parallel universe. Which um, in, let's say that I have a a, a pear an apple on, on the table. And let's say in one dimension I pick the apple, but in the fifth dimension I pick the orange, and there's no way I can tell. Um, similarly, because when you're like, let's say you have you 
the stick figures in two dimensions. You can't like draw on a piece of paper a three dimensional stick figure. They like you would have no they would have no conception. Like they would not understand the third dimension at all. Just like we hardly I mean we don't really understand time that well. It's the fourth dimension. And I mean and if we could if we were like a, a completely understood the fourth dimension like we understand the third dimension then parallel universe will be just as abstract as time is to us. So um, we would never really be able to understand how this works, or um, well, at least at least not, you know, I mean, some really advanced math that proves their parallel universes and some really high tech physics experiments. Uh, that that's all to come. That's that's uh, you know that's future particle physics, I think. Uh, but but again, so there's very interesting things that can come through space and time. Now, imagine if this diagram were, were to be applied to f the fifth dimension, like let's say on the same point in space in one parallel universe like you can actually be in the same point in space or and or time in a different parallel universe but they will never intersect um, that's the idea of parallel universes so it could be that in uh, the fifth dimension if it exists that we can have some very interesting uh, different versions of time and if we were to be accessed you know what exactly does this mean okay so uh, again I'll post a link to the mathematical equations that uh, show backwards time travel uh, I don't have like a complete background in advanced differential calculus and because of that I can't give like an accurate analysis of what exactly they mean I haven't studied um, uh, that kind of I haven't studied that advanced mathematical physics uh, yet I mean I've been doing more set theory and computer science stuff but uh, again the links are there and um, and that, that that will be the mathematical description and again I think what Gödel was trying to do was if he did discover some formulas for backwards time travel, which you, I think you believe he said he did, and Einstein agreed with it, but physicists have worked around that, and it's probably true because every source I find, it's always like physics. Now, I was wondering what were Gödel's thoughts, and I'm sure he had some very good thoughts, and I think that he was more on the idea of topology and set theory because of the fact that he was a logician. I think that's where he would go because, you know, topology is, you know, a study of, you know, spaces and sets and how open and closed sets and how, like, you know, you bend uh, an object, uh, whether well, there's properties and some very advanced mathematics behind that. So I figure Kurt Girdle probably would take that angle, but then again, I could be wrong. I've never seen his equations, don't know what they are, but that's just a speculation. Um, but yeah, so essentially that, the concept is you bend, when you light, light bend space time, as I said before, that is essentially the goal, that's what I'm trying to uh, get across with this video. The rest of the stuff is kind of just supplementary. Okay, well, I hope this helps. Uh, this is uh, the video on, you know, the response to Girdle's equations on backwards time travel. I uh, hope you enjoy it, and I'll start making more videos on this, these, on science and math again. I've been having a lot of stuff going on, so I've been kind of busy. Um, but yeah, I'll go right back to it. Okay, hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. <laughs>